Good evening, everyone, and thank you for inviting me to this important event. And apologize for not being connected with you due to the big time zone difference. I would like to share with you some personal thoughts about our condition as women working in the field of geosciences, focusing on our limits and potentialities, and highlighting three steps that we consider fundamental for achieving gender equality in our scientific sector. Our category of women geoscientists certainly has its working peculiarities. However, I believe that some psychological and behavioral aspects, some social and cultural conditioning are in common with other female professional and scientific categories. Similar obstacles prevent women from having the same opportunities as men and can slow down or disadvantage our career. In my scientific and professional working life of almost 30 years, I have verified that ours is still a male-dominated work environment, especially regarding some geological disciplines traditionally occupied and managed by male colleagues. A working environment often discriminating against us, regardless of our preparation and competence. Consequently, to gain space, career advancement, recognition, we have to work harder, commit to ourselves more, and always be at the highest level of our preparation. Surely today, more than in the past, legal and organizational forms are trying to protect our professionalism. However, things are still not going well. In my opinion, in the path leading to a real change of our condition, a fundamental first step is awareness, is becoming more aware about our value and abilities. For many of us, it is easier, but for others, it is not so obvious. We need to dig in ourselves to remove that sense of subordination induced by years of education that sometimes has also diverted us from our nature, immersed in a culture that has made normal to feel ourselves diminished and so has limited our field of action. This is why, in my opinion, awareness is the first step towards change to motivate our reason and reclaim dignity, freedom, respect, to take the social space that belongs to us. Women are capable of doing, building, managing, creating, taking care of, innovating. So a healthy, civilized and advanced society cannot go ahead without female intelligence cannot deny or take away value from women who are the pillars founding human communities. Social and cultural stereotypes limit us. They are collective defects that without realizing it, we absorb. We make our own, transforming them in personal defects. We have to become aware that these stereotypes act in us, even if we rationally disapprove of them. So let's keep away from them because some behavioral automatisms are often the basis of our mistakes. Only in these terms, awareness can lead to a real emancipation. Namely, what I consider the second fundamental step to change the women's condition. Emancipation means overcoming everything that prevents us from evolving, overcoming the idea that others have of us. Emancipation is real when it is based on the real personal experience. So let's recognize ourselves 
dignity, respect. Let's take everything that is in our prerogatives without arrogance, but with firm belief. Emancipation passes through the enhancement of our talent and through our inner refusal of lightness to change. Refusal of that comfortable mechanism of habituation to what is pre-established, to the role that society assigns us and that often determines us to perceive ourselves as society has built us, not up to pair, unable to carry out some tasks or to aspire to some goals. Whenever this happens, we are losers. Well, if awareness is the basis of true emancipation, emancipation paves the way for the third step in this path of change. That is responsibility. Therefore, the commitment to act and to evaluate the consequences of our action. And I would add responsibility as impossibility of not acting, of staying still and accepting this state of inferiority. So it's not enough to be aware, it's not enough to be emancipated. One must also be responsible, promoting a new way of thinking and acting, which develops one's own categories, one's own ways of expression, one's way to creativity. As geoscientists, we study the Earth, we know its processes and dynamics, we are able to reconstruct past events and hypothesize future evolutions, able to transfer geological knowledge the value of geological heritage and georesources to the, the entire society, to inform and warn of risks. We can study solutions to the global challenges of our historical time. Well, let's feel responsible for all this knowledge, responsible towards society, the environment, and above all, towards future generations. Let's recover what perhaps is the deepest meaning of our profession, the sense of service to society. And then let's take every opportunity for geological collaboration between women to experience the pleasure to combine our skills, to put into a system those valuable characteristics that distinguish us as women, and that, and that I have always appreciated in my colleagues, such as good sense, concreteness, accuracy in work, ability to perform several tasks simultaneously. Let's create the, the conditions for exercising female leadership, avoiding any rivalry or envy among us, but joining our energies. All these actions must support our self-confidence because sometimes we build obstacles to our career by ourselves. Every time we do not believe in ourselves, every time we exclude a possible path, considering it too difficult or not suitable for a woman. I conclude wishing you and, and myself too, to always have faith in ourselves, aware of our value and responsible in our work. Worth a try. Thanks again for giving me this space in this important initiative. Thank you.